pedigree analysis. A pedigree is a diagram of a family tree with conventional symbols showing the occurrence of heritable characters in parents and offspring over multiple generations. Therefore, inheritance patterns of particular traits can be traced and described using pedigrees. Pedigree analysis most often identifies three modes of single locus in inheritance, which are autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and X-linked recessive inheritance. For our syllabus, we are going to look at example for the pedigree analysis for dominant trait and recessive trait only. Here are some of the importance of pedigree analysis. The first one, pedigree analysis helps molecular geneticists to determine the exact interrelationships of the DNA molecules from related individuals. Second, pedigree analysis allows human geneticists to predict how phenotypic traits controlled by the genotype at a single locus are inherited. Third, pedigree analysis helps us to calculate the probability that a future child will have a particular genotype and phenotype. Now we are going to look at how to construct a pedigree. Pedigrees are produced using standardized symbols. It is common to use square to represent males and circle to represent females. Shaded circles or square means that the individual has the concentrate. For example, if this square were to be shaded, it means that this male has the uh, trait of interest. Horizontal line connects two parents. So if these two individuals are the parents, so you have to draw a line to connect these two individuals. Vertical line drops from the parents to their offspring. So if this couple were to have children, so the children would be down below. For example, if this couple were to have four children, so vertical line will connect the children to the parents. Within a group of siblings, the oldest is on the left and the youngest is on the right. Each horizontal row represents a separate generation. The top row represent the earliest generation and the bottom row represent the most recent generation. Okay, so now we are going to look at pedigree analysis for dominant trait. For example, a three generation pedigree that traces the occurrence of a widow's peak. In this table, as you can see, there are two alleles that controls for the expression of widow's peak. The dominant allele, capital W, and the recessive allele, small w. A person with the genotype homozygous dominant, capital W, capital W, will expresses or the person will have widow's peak. But for the person that has um, the genotype homozygous recessive, small w, small w, the person will lack widow's peak. The occurrence of widow's peak is due to the presence of dominant allele, capital W, in the genotype of the person. So, if an individual with a genotype homozygous, sorry, heterozygous, capital W, small w, then what is the phenotype of that person? Can you determine? This diagram shows you a three-generation pedigree of widow's peak. Widow's peak is an example of an autosomal dominant inheritance. A person with a widow's peak would have a V-shaped frontal hairline or pointed frontal hairline like this. By looking at the pedigree, shaded, shaded square indicates that the male individual have the trait, whereas Shaded circle indicates that the female individual have the trait. In the first generation of the grandparents, there are two sets of couple for the grandparents. For the first couple, the main grandparent has the widow's peak with the heterozygous genotype, capital W, small w. 
For the second couple, the female grandparents has the widow's peak that also have the heterozygous genotype, capital W, small w. In the second generation, which is the generation for parents, aunts and uncles, the first couple of the grandparents have four children. Two of the children have the widow's peak trait, these two, and the other two children are lacking the trait. The second couple of the grandparents have two daughters. The first daughter have the widow's peak trait, whereas the other daughter is lacking the trait. The youngest son of the first grandparent couples marries to the eldest daughter of the second grandparent couple. These two individuals are now the parents for the third generation, which is here are the two sisters or the daughter for the for the parents in the second generation. So for the third generation, it consists of two daughters. The first daughter with widow speak could be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous, like the one shown here. And for the second daughter, the second daughter will like widow speak with a homozygous recessive genotype. Therefore, it can be concluded that for the inheritance of a dominant trait, the trait can only be expressed if the genotype of an individual is either a homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Next, pedigree analysis for recessive traits. Shown here is a three-generation pedigree that traces the occurrence of the inability of individuals to taste chemical called PTC. PTC is phenylthiocarbamide. Basically, PTC testing ability is a simple genetic trait governed by a pair of alleles. These alleles are the dominant T allele, which is uh, for tasting, and the recessive T allele for non-tasting. Person with the genotype homozygous dominant, capital T, capital T, and heterozygous individual, capital T, small t, can taste PTC. But for persons that uh, has the genotype homozygous recessive, small t, small t, they cannot taste PTC. Therefore, it can be concluded that for the inheritance of recessive trait is that the trait can only be expressed if the genotype of an individual is homozygous recessive. For heterozygous individuals, they carry the recessive allele small t. So therefore, for heterozygous individuals, there are carrier for the recessive trait. This is because the trait cannot be expressed in the heterozygous condition. The difference in the pedigree analysis for dominant traits and recessive trait are number one, the dominant trait is controlled by dominant allele. As for the recessive trait, the trait is controlled by recessive allele. For dominant trait, if an individual is heterozygous, the dominant trait will be expressed. But for the recessive trait, if an individual is heterozygous, the trait will not be expressed. The heterozygous individuals are considered carrier for the trait. For example, for dominant trait, the occurrence of widow speak is due to the genotype either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. For the recessive trait, the occurrence, for example, for the trait, the inability to taste PTC is due to the genotype homozygous recessive, small t, small t.